Hey guys, this is Elise. I'm a licensed professional counselor and coach. I own and operate Counseling Care Circle as Counselor Park. My organization is doing a project called Catholic Christian Friends for Intersectional Racial Healing. In this video, I will be describing what the project is and its parameters. Catholic Christian Friends for uh, <laughs> Intersectional Racial Healing is clearly a mouthful. So sometimes I'll refer to it by its acronym CCFIRH. This project is focused on demonstrating that friends, family, neighbors can talk about really hard topics like racial experiences. These conversation points do not have to threaten the relationships shared with people in your core support circle. It does take care and intentionality. Sometimes you might need a moderator to help you get through the topics or content if it's too triggering and you haven't really worked through it yourself, but it is doable. By following along this project, you'll be able to view my friends and I discuss racial experiences. Racial experiences and narratives tend to have three to four types of content. The first is identity development, looking in the mirror, seeing your skin and body, navigating how to grow with and grow into your skin while journeying through society and pockets of social circles. What does the world, what does media, what do other individuals say about me and my body and about others and their own bodies? And how do I figure myself out? The second type of racial experience content has to do with social experiences of race, the glass ceiling, microaggression, social ostracization, etc. The third type of racial narrative has to do with experiences of physical aggression, physical violence, sexual violence, near death experiences, all the way up to death. The fourth type can be its own character and also can be found linked to the second and third types of narratives. Content which demonstrates racism on the level of educational curriculum, codified laws, organizational policies and procedures, cultural discourse and politics. The stories in this project are nonfiction. They are 100% real and belong to each person who shares it. They reflect their experiences, their perspectives and each respective speaker's opinions. These stories can feel accessible, but can also feel really challenging. So for that reason, this project's per parameters are extremely controlled to, for the safety and security of all involved. I will be moderating the conversations as a friend with a background in therapy and coaching, but I will not be therapizing any of my friends in these conversations because they are my friends. And the purpose of this project isn't to show what therapy can look like inside the privacy of a session. Rather, the purpose of this project is to show you that tough chats about racial experiences can be safely had within the context of the relationships that matter the most between friends and family and romantic partners. In upcoming videos, you will see video introductions to each of the panelists who will be involved. They are experts of their own personal narrative and they're my friends. Some of them already are friends with one another and some of them will meet for the first time through me and through this project. After the video introductions, you'll see subsequent videos of mini groups paneling to talk with one another about racial experiences and address some of the pre-submitted questions in the Q&A forum for this project. I hope that this project will encourage those involved, as well as those viewing, to slow down, self-reflect, and maybe even feel encouraged to revisit conversations with your friends with a confidence that comes from having loyalty and mutual relational value. At this point, I will share the motivational reasons that I had to create and launch this project. First, there are plenty of resources on how to discuss and dismantle racism on organizational, corporate, and legal levels. However, there are hardly any resources to encourage and give modeling on how to discuss racial experiences in personal relationships with friends, partners, neighbors, and family members. For too long, the topic of racial experience has felt threatening to the point where people's fears that the topic alone could break relationships has prevented us from moving forward on a personal level. And as most of us who were not born yesterday, 
No, we cannot change people's hearts by writing more laws or new policies and procedures. Heart work and personal work happens in personal spaces with personal intentions. Second, I am a licensed professional counselor and coach. I see and hear people's challenges, struggles, and stories of suffering on a regular basis. I work with individuals, couples, and family systems with babies and children. Some of my previous and current patients are as young as three years of age. I can tell you from my own experience as a therapist, as well as a human being, with friends of all racial and ethnic backgrounds, that I have often witnessed the lack of language development when it comes to racial experiences that are not purely white and black. Here's a side note. Language development is critical for the identity development of an individual. This is part of why babies' brains process the acquisition of language earlier than how to move with finessed bodily coordination. Language development is also important for an individual to be able to make sense of their experiences and gain maturity by processing and learning from the gathered sensorial data and personality and character dynamics involved in each window of narrative, or what we call a singular memory. The brain tosses back experiences that are sensorial with all five senses from the right brain to the left brain, where the left brain organizes things for data, words, analyses, etc., and then tosses that back to the sensorial brain or the sensorial right side that tosses it back and it processes back and forth starting in the individual's brain. Um, it helps to socially process with others as well in conversation. So um, going back to my professional background, there's lots of discourse and written literature in the United States on interracial relationships between black and white persons, but there is a lack of resources and a lack of intentional conversation for all other intersectional relationships. I also frequently witness that interracial couples often say that they feel uncertain, sometimes uncomfortable, about how to navigate racial discourse when they are a couple that is not the um, not exactly just white and black. So if you have a white and a person of color or a person of color who is not black, um, or a POC who is not black, or you have a black person and a POC who is not black or white, or a POC and a POC who are neither white nor black, or a biracial person and a, a biracial or multiracial person who are mixtures of many things and they're not purely white and black only. So when I meet these interracial couples who are not just white and black, who lack language and who lack access to resources with language for them, what often happens is one person will say, I am not the same ethnicity as my partner or the same race as my partner, so I will stay silent on these matters and let that person handle all these conversations. I'll let them bring it up on their own terms. I won't speak on it when we have kids and I'll, I'll do um, everything I can because my intention is to remain respectful in that space and also it's kind of scary. However, this is also what happens as, um, as an unintended consequence. The children who are mixed between the, you know, the two parents end up having a parent who remains silent on their visual identity, their own visual identity, and specifically about race and ethnicity. And then they have another parent who might be vocal about their own visual identity. So the children, they know from deep inside, as well as when they look in the mirror, that they reflect both of their parents. They're made of their parents. They are, they are half and half of whatever their parents' genetic makeup is. So children are then left with an incomplete story or model for who them, they themselves are. Some children end up leaning more this way or that way adopting one or the other parent's ethnic, racial identity and culture completely or more. Some children abandon the conversation altogether and feel like they don't really belong anywhere or don't know how to identify where they might belong. And this is because the children are left to navigate that terrain completely by themselves because neither of their parents are the same in terms of racial ethnic makeup as themselves. 
And I know leaving a child to fend for themselves and figure out the toughest things by themselves is not the intention of most good parents. If we look at this theologically from a Catholic, Christian, Orthodox perspective, God made us in the image of God's self. The enemy of God has had the same tactic from day one of creation, divide and conquer. The enemy of God divided the first created humans from God, then divided them from one another. So I feel, as a child of God, because I'm a believer, that my moral and spiritual obligation is to help bridge the gaps, create a path between the abyss of division. That leads to the final motivation for this project. This project is focused down to race chats between Catholic and Christian friendships and Orthodox friendships with individuals who are members across the myriad of Christian denominations of belief because we are, uh, sorry, because we share a common worldview that we are made in the image of God. Even if we are facing what seems to be an insurmountable challenge to have a conversation about really, really challenging topics, we know that our foundation of common ground is strong enough to withstand it and our relationships are not immediately at stake. There is a thick foundation of friendship and mutual respect and underneath it, there is the thicker foundation of common faith and a shared God who made us in God's self's image. I do realize this specifies and narrows down our focus, but we're not trying to accomplish all things for every aspect of racism. If it were that simple, racism would have been resolved by now. We're trying to do a small and very specific thing. That is simply to demonstrate that racial experiences can be uh, shared with friends and the conversations can not only help relationships, but may also deepen them. It is doable. And that very thing is the only thing we're going to do our best at. We might not be perfect and it might seem messy, but it is what we're aiming for. So please come, engage, be respectful, and try to be open-minded. Please remember that these are conversations between friends who love and care for each other. And these are not conversations between formal organizations who are trying to be anything but personal. This means that certain phrases may mean different things because it is a personal conversation. So for example, when you use the phrase, I can't possibly imagine that in the workplace about someone's racial experience, it is a very different context and tone than when that same phrase is used between friends. When it's used at work, it's like, well, why not? <laughs> We're all equal employees. When it is between friends, it is used because you hate for your friend to suffer any harm and it makes you feel all kinds of ways to know that your friend had to experience that. Or even with the concept of potentially hurting someone as another example. So when you're afraid to offend at work about racial experiences, there is the implication that you're afraid of getting written up and losing your job. But with friends, it's totally different. With friends, it's I don't want to hurt you because you're my friend, because I care about you, because you matter to me. How can I help you? How can I fix the problem? What can I do? But also, as much as I'm interested in learning about your heritage based on your race or ethnicity or genetics, I also want to keep knowing all of you. You have a rich heritage, but you also have your own individual person with unique traits and experiences. I really like you and I love you because you're my friend. I want to adopt your interests and share your joys and also be there with your sorrows. I want to go to bat with you when something wrong happens to you because as a friend, I'm loyal. The concept of offense at work or on a corporate or legislative level is very different from the concept of hurt between friends. So please, as you watch our conversations between friends about race and racial experiences, keep in mind that we're friends. So we're having friends with the type of intimate language and casual language that friends use. As a final disclaimer, do not come for my friends. If you have a problem with this project, come to me. My organization and counseling care circle is directing and covering this project. Again, in this project, I will be using my professional knowledge and skills as a counselor and a coach 
to help guide the conversations because I'm a whole person, but I'm also human. Well, I'm so excited to share this project with you and look forward to the journey. Please engage with us here, engage with me here, leave your comments, send messages, what have you online, and let's have some conversations. Thanks and God bless.